Race for Rhinos is proudly brought to you by the Botswana Investment and Trade Center in partnership with Botswana Tourism, our pride, your destination. Supporting the Race for Rhinos is the Botswana Investment and Trade Center, who encourages international and domestic investment and ensuring that Botswana features as an attractive, competitive and economically viable trade and investment destination in Africa. The race for rhinos was finally underway. After months of planning, waiting and concluding dates, times and places, the South African media and more than 100 aircraft departed from various airports across Southern Africa for the third annual race for rhinos. Destination, Suhapan, Botswana. Barely three weeks earlier, race organizer, pilot and businesswoman Tammy McAllister departed Gaborone for the beautiful Suha Pan on a mission to turn nothing into an airport with control tower, customs and a mini town to cater for more than 500 people. Well, the biggest challenge was getting the venue right. The pans are wet, as you know, so we couldn't use the pans themselves. Three weeks ago, there was nothing here, just bush. So we built this whole place in three weeks. Big problem with uh, stabilizing the soil and uh, getting the runway uh, prepared and hard enough. And then we've got a huge dust problem. So you've seen all the, the big trucks driving around spraying water and spraying dust suppressants. Sua Pan, a seasonal lake that fills with water during the summer rainy season, was a welcome sight for pilots and navigators, including some from Great Britain and Alaska. Botswana air traffic controllers were at hand to assist pilots with approach and landing, complete with ground crew to guide aircraft to parking bays. Amongst the early arrivals was the Minister of Environment, Wildlife and Tourism, the Honourable Chikedi Kama and his family. Part of the superb organisation was on-site customs and immigration to streamline the arrival process into Botswana. Day one, and if you know of a good marriage counsellor, the Fun Vakes may need one as we speak. I'm the pilot and she's my navigator and we're putting our marriage to the test this weekend by seeing if we can find our way around the pants. Uh, we're hoping to be in the first five. We've got the third fastest aeroplane here, so it all depends on how we, we perform. The Race for Rhinos has received support from all quarters. When you have the support from the president, you know, then you can do basically anything you want to, but his participation is really something that gives us a lot of support as well. And, and it gives us the, um, you know, the, that support that we're feeling that we're not alone in this. You know, we've got support all the way from the top so that when we're receiving our visitors, our visitors know as well that the commitment from the president is there as well. And they come into a product which is, you know, something beyond description, if you see what I'm saying. The president, Ian Kummer himself, was there to see off the first plane. And very much like it works in golf, aircraft are adjudged according to performance and then assigned a handicap, which ensures every team has an equal chance to win the race for rhinos. The route for day one and a short hop over to Tumi and continuing on a clockwise direction onto Celebi Pikwe, Kama Rhino Sanctuary and back to the pans. At the start line, the Morrisons from Alaska, Leah and Rick, were under starter's orders. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Yeah. Okay, time on. Time's on. Okay. Go, 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 go. Go, 172, you can do it. Okay, speed's coming alive, everything's in the green. Do you follow them or do you just do your own thing? <laughs> All right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, some teams were ready for white knuckle flying. As it turned out, the terrain and the wind in Botswana was going to be a real tester on day one. References were few and far between, and there was some very serious searching going on. Okay. 
And some rather colorful language. Where's that? Don't, don't worry about the photos. The photos mean f Go down. Just fly on the map. Too many things at one time. Just to stress you. Stressful times in the cockpit for some, while others were spot on. But I was a bike in here, a shop, shop, shop. And I was a bike, he's a bike. And I was hunting this and a bike in here. Young deer. Boy. Well done indeed, but for the visitors from Alaska in their Cessna 172, it was a case of a grand tour of Botswana. Well, we gotta get to that road. That's the only way we can do it, is to get to the tarred road and then go back and follow that. So do you want to go? He's on an Easter heavy. Let's go, 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 go. Their only chance of not getting lost right now. I thought you were gonna follow the road. Overhead checkpoint one, Charles Urban and Vaughn Smith in their Beach 55 were ahead on time, followed closely by Neil and Christopher Hellman with the Beach G36 not too far off the pace, while another pairing from Alaska, Andrew Conroy and Kenneth McLeod were right on their tail wing in third place, but there was some frantic flying out there. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I'm still down to you, Yeah, on the side of the field. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. The local population looked as if World War III had broken out, while the marshals on terra firma kept track of all the aircraft passing over the checkpoint for safety and race control. One of the oldest aircraft in the race, the Antonov AN-2, or Little Annie, got a special welcome. Meanwhile, the Morrisons were now hitting their targets. Okay, this road's meeting another road. Okay, do you want to stand? I see it. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> now, right. which way is so I don't go on the wrong side of it? You want to be on the, this side, the north side, but you got to get down low. Oh, that was tough. <laughs> Yeah. But look, look what the wind's doing there. The wind's pushing us this way yeah. all the time. How long? Day 165. Even though the pilots and their navs were there to compete, have fun and enjoy themselves in the process, it was important for Botswana Tourism Organization to also take aviation to the people. In this case, two schools in Suwa City, where some scholars got the chance of a lifetime. When you're bringing an event to the people, it's not just who you're bringing in, but who you're visiting in the area that you're taking to. So we went out with the helicopter, went to two schools, and through a competition, children won places to go on the aircraft. And I know that one of the most touching was taking a little handicapped boy on the plane. And it was just amazing. It brings aviation to people who have no opportunity to ever go near an aircraft or participate in it. The occasion was immense for those who got the opportunity to fly, but not lost to those on the ground. Well, this little fellow may just be commentating material. For Chris Briers, it was also awesome, as the children were overawed by the experience. Uh, it's quite amazing, especially to see the excitement. And, uh, you know, they, they really pay or they're interested in what they're seeing and asking the right questions. Very nice. Oh, all 
I can say I'm the brave man. I, I'm not scared of anything in my life. I want to be our president. Our president. Like our president in Botswana. A once in a lifetime for many of these children, which duplicated the great time the competitors had on day one. Well, most of them, anyway. In the lonely hour, you stare in disbelief. Try to make it on your own. Try to stand upon your feet. You can find the power if you know where to look. Keep on doing what you should. Finding all the checkpoints in the required order proved to be a challenge for a lot of the competitors, with 16 aircraft missing one or more. Oops, competitors 9, 44, 48, and 56 left doodles all over the show. Turn around. No, turn around. No, turn around. No, turn around. <laughs> when you started turning around, you just take me to a heading. Take me to a position. <laughs> I got so confused when you started turning around. I'm like, where are we now? We made one. Oh my gosh. Yay. Hey, Peter Pike has recorded the head of Angel. Shut on up. The first plane that returned to Suapan was in the hands of Jack Onderstal in his Glass Air 3. He completed the 332 nautical miles, equivalent to 644 kilometers in one hour and 38 minutes. But being a handicap race, it was the father and son combination of Dirk and John Boyson that took line honors in their Cessna 172. But it was the map work and the navigation that caught out most of the teams. The uh, third leg called us out and we uh, turned inside the the uh, turn point had to go around, hoping we won't get disqualified. This is a navigator's race, and if the navigator doesn't perform, you're not going to get anywhere. And Hendrik performed today. He really, really did well. Eh? Hopefully, we so, can duplicate it tomorrow. So, thanks, Don. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think the ammo can be for a crayon, some of you, but if you so, I think I can before. And it wasn't lost on the rest of the competitors that they too were privileged to race at this incredible venue. We are producers of uh, soda ash and uh, salt, both uh, the salt for human consumption and for chemicals. Uh, we, our capacity is about 650,000 tons of salt. We're currently just at 400,000. Uh, about half of that goes to South Africa for the production of... Um, uh, of um, PVC, and uh, the rest is for human consumption. Uh, the pan floods seasonally. Uh, last year, this year, we've had a lot of rain early in the season, and it was the highest the water has been on the pan side, and we actually had to stop it flowing elsewhere into our, in, into our solar ponds. And we, we agreed to host them, and also prepared the runway and all the ground area. At the end of day one, Jason Beamish entertained his fellow competitors, VIPs, guests and locals to a fine display of airmanship. We asked the race director how this race compares to other air races in Southern Africa. Uh, you can't compare it. This is the top race on the continent. <laughs> um, no, I think the feedback very good. Our handicapping system is different, so uh, we, don't, we don't have the, the same problems with handicapping, and I think most of the people here are happy. Um, I think also the people who are here wants to be here. They, they flew a long way to be in Botswana. And I think the other difference is, is the venue, because nobody disappears to hotels, etc. They all stay together for the whole weekend, and we all have a lot of fun. The day ended with a short briefing from Chris at the dinner on the vast, beautiful, and impressive Suapan. But the competitive fires were still burning bright, and after day one, just a few clicks of the clock separated the top ten teams. Day two needed the navigators to step up to the map, so to speak.
Day two of the third race for rhinos and a beautiful sunrise greeted all as they awoke to the stunning vistas. Situated in the middle of the dry savanna of northeastern Botswana, what a setting for an air race. Oh, look, we've done it. We've pulled it off. Botswana Tourism Organization, they're fantastic to work with and I really appreciate the opportunity that they give me, you know, by coming on board. And um, a, a big part of it is also working with the Civil Aviation Authority. And I have to say that uh, it has been such a pleasure. They have been so open and so forthcoming in making sure that all our permit applications, you know, our runways, our NOTAMs, everything is done in accordance with the regulations. And that is, is, is in itself just, um, you know, just a huge appreciation to them. That, that, that's been one of the biggest um, issues. But as you can see, we turned it into Suapan City, or as we've got Chikuri Runway. And uh, yeah, look, you know, it doesn't come without its challenges. With the type of tourism that we're creating in Botswana, which is taking tourism out to around the country and not just in the main centers, I think is really where it makes it very special. With the aircraft ready for day two, we asked the race leaders, the Boysons, what they did right. We just did what we needed to do. It took every basic step uh, as we could. And yeah, it went quite well. We didn't expect the result, but quite happy and yeah, hopefully do it again today. They were often racing. The world-class standards here impressed all. It is, it's just a fantastic event and uh, really world-class. Eh? Everybody should try and come here at least once. Eh? It's a wow, wow, wow in every capacity. The food, the accommodation, the um, the vibe between the pilots, etc. And then this type of flying just to make, makes you remember why we fly. It's just fun all the way. It's a, it's a once a year experience. This is our first one. It's amazing. <laughs> Every single detail was catered for, and from the safety aspects to the fine food was a joy to experience and behold. But the racing too would be of a high standard. Back here, boys. <laughs> what a beautiful day, what a beautiful day, ladies. The astounding views and an ability to see for miles in the clear, unpolluted sky brought an air of surrealism to every team who took to the skies. This is certainly one of those wish-you-were-here moments. The first turn point was situated on Kakonya Island with a race distance of 324 nautical miles or almost 600 kilometers. Uh, five minutes we should be past those islands, which is good. And we fly to a restricted area now. With the aircraft all departing according to handicaps, with the slowest first and the fastest aircraft last, the potential existed that if every crew flew exactly to handicap, all the aircraft would in theory cross the finish line at the same time. This of course never happens due to navigational errors, wind, pilot error and aircraft vagaries, but it is the best way for every type of plane, with every type and range of top speed, to be able to compete against all the others out there. With most pull aircraft up. choosing pull to fly up. at low altitude, others preferred a higher altitude, which also gave the most breathtaking vistas. The father and son team, the Boysons, with their call sign Echo Alpha Delta, piloted their C-172 over all the checkpoints spot on and in first place. Some teams were doing the royal wave thing, while others battled with left and right. The loggers fitted to each aircraft showed just how difficult the terrain was. Number 29, Anton Appleton and Andre Klaassen, even paying an unscheduled visit to the Okavango Delta. Yeah. Where's he turning? No, it's just fly. Oh, here's the main road. Okay, we're going to go left, so we've got to go the other way. Right, right. No, we haven't fixed the turning signal then, man. Where's the turn? Where's the... Oh, man, the computer... The camera's
telling you, we uh, 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 But you must look, I'm the one flying. Fucking buddy, try, okay, stab me, Darwin. I'll take it off for it, I'll take it off for it, I'll take it off for it, I'll take it off I got last shot of the air, I got it. 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 And I'm not going to tell him what that level is either. <laughs> in flying, speed is life, altitude is life insurance, and the higher the altitude, the more you get to see the beauty of Botswana. Quite frankly, one could never get enough of it. The idea was to bring aviation to the people, but also show that Botswana isn't just a wildlife destination, it's so much more. And we wanted to show different varieties of tourism, how you can fly in and have a holiday. And that was the idea three years ago. And here we are three years time with a much bigger race in a new location and with more planes. And I think we've achieved what we started off to do. In the meantime, the plight of the rhino in Africa is worsening with every passing day. There are no northern white rhinos left in the wild and only a handful in captivity. The air race helps to create an awareness of the good work that the Botswana government is doing towards promoting the country as a safe haven for those critically endangered species. One of the highlights is going to release four rhinos into the park here in Suapan, which means that we started out raising funds for rhinos at this event. Last year we were donated 100, and this year we're going to start that move of moving four of the 100 into a protected area. So we've achieved that goal as well. And long may it continue. For the teams up in the sky, they were hoping to get the job done as quickly as possible. But as most married couples will tell you, it's all about the communication. Where are we going to now? Are we off to... Having already turned at the last checkpoint at Nata, the Boysons in their Cessna 172 Skyhawk were well on their way to winning the race. But not if Davi van Staden and Johan Bosman in a Vans RV8, a tandem two-seat single-engine low-wing Humboldt aircraft, had anything to do with it. They were closely followed by race number 69, Dan Conradi and Hendrik Fisser, also in a Vans RV8. Still in the running for line honours in a Cessna 206 was Morton Hibben and Keaton Perkins, who were gaining time with every turn of the engine. There was some spectacular flying done in the skies of Botswana. Doing it, quite clearly, was even more fun and taxing. Now you might need to be low. No, no, no. I just want you to watch the trees. I didn't say, I, I want you low. I want you to watch there, not there, that's all. A much quieter cockpit and in third place was Johnny and Anzit Smith in their RV8, having gained 2 minutes and 26 seconds on handicap. But when all was said and done, the day belonged to race number 23, Dirk and John Boyson in their Cessna 172, having gained more than six minutes on their handicap over the two days of exacting racing. Second went to Davi van Staden and Johan Bosman in their Vans RV8, but it really was a dominant display from the father and son team in first. A nice flight, a really nice flight, um, not too bad, and we hit all our markers. Yeah, the pans were a bit hard to get navigate, but otherwise, yeah, we looked at the parts, looked at the tracks, followed a few fences, and at the end of the day, it worked out well for us, so yeah, quite chuffed. Fantastic, in air like a master, we hit all the points, made up some time, fantastic day, fantastic race. More smiles and congratulations all around, while the format of handicap racing was quite clear for all to see as the aircraft arrived and touched down just seconds apart. The handicappers certainly knew what they were doing. It was an aviator's dream come true. This is more than a special race. Yeah. This is just, just really, really incredible. We feel very, very fortunate to be here. Yeah, and it's just been great, great fun. We've met some friends that I think will be friends for life. It's 
good place, good deal. You know, this is <laughs> this is one of the things that um, Botswana Tourism have, have come to, used to understanding about me. When we have an idea, we do it, we make it happen. And delivering something that is exceptional, that, that is almost like a trademark now. And it's just how we keep improving it. The ministry behind BTO is such a, you know, uh, um, a supportive team towards each other that these are the results and this is the effect. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're able to give um, a, a del or deliver a product which makes us proud. This was significant too for the Antonov AN2 with its entry into the history books for being the world's largest single engine biplane to water ski across Suapan, Botswana. Little Annie, even though she is a little on the vintage side, amazed with her versatility. The Boysons getting their due rewards and accolades as the race for Rhinos champions for 2017 trophy awarded by Minister Chikedi Kama. The third edition of the Race for Rhinos will long be remembered for its superb spirit of flying brotherhood, the warm Botswana hospitality and the hard, uncompromising yet fair racing in the pristine skies over the Suapans. The Race for Rhinos was proudly brought to you by the Botswana Investment and Trade Centre in partnership with Botswana Tourism, our pride, your destination.